Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which <coughs> and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. O you who have been my help, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage, and wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. O you who have been my help, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Lord, have mercy upon God on high and on earth peace, goodwill toward. 
Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous, jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat of abel Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael will Yehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Yehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. upon the face of your anointed. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. The epistle is from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah. 
pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You remember the story of Israel wandering, wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. You remember why Israel was wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. God had brought them out of Egypt, delivered them from Pharaoh's bitter yoke of slavery with his mighty deliverance at the Red Sea. When they were told, be still, and the Lord will fight for you. And he did. And without them lifting a single sword, Pharaoh's army was destroyed. They were free. They head off to the promised land, which God had promised them. He said, it will be yours. They get there. They send two spies in, and the spies come back and talk about the glories of this land, how huge the clusters of grapes are, and that they can take the people. They can defeat them, as God had commanded. The people were afraid. They didn't believe they could actually defeat the people. They were already there. They didn't believe that they could conquer the land that God had promised them. See, their problem was not about the people in the land, or their strength, or Israel's strength, or their military might or ability. It was that they didn't trust God's promise. God said, it's yours, take it. They said, we can't. So because they did not trust God, they're off to wander for 40 years until that whole generation had perished and would not enter the land. While they were wandering, though, God didn't forsake them. He didn't depart from them. He was with them. He gave them water, quail, and most memorably, manna. Miraculous bread of heaven, what the Psalms call the bread of angels, was there every morning for them. All they had to do was pick it up. But with one small direction, every morning they were to gather enough for their household for one day, except on the day before the Sabbath, then two, so they wouldn't work on the Sabbath, but always just enough. And they were not to keep any till morning. Why not? Because God had promised that there would be more the next morning. To keep some till the next morning would be to say, I'm not sure, God. I need to make sure for myself that I have some food for tomorrow. Because I don't trust you. Whether they would say that or not, that's what that said. Now, some of them did keep some till the morning, against God's command and not trusting in his promise. And it stank, and it had worms in it, and God was angry with them, because they didn't trust him. You would think, having been brought out of Egypt by his mighty deliverance, having been given water and quail and daily bread here in the wilderness by God, they would have learned that they can trust him. But then you would think by now we would have learned that we could trust God. Jesus gives a similar test, similar, similar opportunity to trust him. Similar provision. All night long they had caught nothing. Now this isn't just... You went out fishing for the day because you enjoyed it and you didn't catch anything, oh well. It was still good to be out there, there's always another day. No. They went to work. They put in their day's work and came home without a paycheck. For most of us who get a regular check, we can't quite understand. Farmers surely can understand. Although, remember, there is no great catch insurance they can go to. Caesar's not going to cover their lost crop. They're just out. They put in their day's work and they have nothing to put food on the table with. 
but perhaps they didn't catch any fish so that they could learn to trust God. Because Jesus comes now and tells them, put out your boats into the deep and drop your nets. Master, we worked all night. We're professionals at this. We know what we're doing. We caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, we will, we will put down the nets. At your word. That's all the reason we need. That is all the reason we need for anything. At your word, Lord. It was enough for Mary, who could not understand how this was going to happen and all of what this would mean, but said, let it be to me according to your word. And up comes this incredible catch of fish. God had provided for their need. Jesus had filled their empty boats. And surely they were feeling a little better about their night's work when they finally got all of them rounded up and into the market. Jesus had provided for all that they need to support this body and life, just as we're told he will do. And so Peter falls down at Jesus' knees, worships him, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Peter makes the right move here. He moves from the physical to the spiritual. He has seen the work of God in the physical realm, tending to his physical needs. And he moves on to the spiritual. And that's the way it goes. Luther said that if, until we can trust God with our bellies, we will never trust him with our souls. So to an extent here, let us follow St. Peter's example. When we see that God has provided for our physical needs, let's move on to the spiritual. But let us not follow him when he says, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Oh, it's not the second part. He moves straight from God's holiness to his sinfulness. He first comes to God, falling down in worship and confessing his sinfulness. That is right. That is exactly right. That is what we need to do. First things first, we come to God in humility, worship Him, confess our sinfulness. But we don't look to Him and say, depart from me. Not that Peter's wrong exactly. He knows his sinfulness and God's holiness, and it's the natural response. And he gets no rebuke for it, but rather the assurance, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid, Peter. I'm not going to depart from you because of your sin. I came to you because of your sin. I came to you to take your sin and bear it to the cross and put it as far as the east is from the west and remember it no more. I came that you may entrust your soul to me as well. We have seen, and the more we look, the more we see that God has taken care of our physical needs. Not that we have always trusted him. How often have we, no matter how many times the Lord has provided, still worry whether the Lord will provide again? How hard is it to actually follow Matthew 6 when Jesus says, Do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will put on. Do not worry about tomorrow. Let today's own worries be enough. How hard is it to do that? Because us 
sinful men, we sinful men, have a very hard time trusting God. But not only does he call us to trust our bodies to him, but our souls as well. Because just as it is with Peter, it is with us, Jesus does not depart from him. He did not depart from Israel, even in their wandering in the wilderness. He does not depart from us, even though we are sinful men. But rather, he comes to us because of that. And invites us to entrust everything to him. To not despair of his forgiveness, but live in it. Expect it. Trust it. And expect it again next time we sin. And the next time. And the next time. To trust that his love for us will never depart from us. That he will never depart. Who lives and reigns, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God.
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world, and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work that God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the educational institutions of our Synod, for our preschools, our day schools, and high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who partake this day of Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people, let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides, to support the Church and to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially for Elsie Pearl, Katie Beth, Paul, Francis, Cecil, Vernon, Lucille, Harry, Nadine, Emma Lou, Larry, Betty, Arlene, Jim, Shirley, Rudy, Frank, Mary, Melody, Barb, Sandy, Tom, Charles, Brittany, Nora, Teresa, Anne, Jason, Ella Ray, Dick, Robert, Zoe, David, Joseph, and Jacob. That God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who mourn, that in their time of sorrow they would not lose hope, but rely on God's promise, that he will never leave them or forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartfelt thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own High Priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, Deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. 